Hello and welcome to today's painting demonstration. I'm going to show you how to paint a sunset lit flower field featuring mostly foreground daisies and then lots of various grasses throughout the field. I'm going to explain my process along the way. I believe that we are settled on a new underpainting pigment candidate and that is going to be burnt sienna and I updated that on the starting screen. I'm going to go ahead and update that on my ebook and all my other material lists as well. So it has a high enough pigment load to do everything we need it to do and it's a very standard painting pigment so it's not going anywhere. So you can see that here at the bottom of my palette and we're gonna work with that from now on so if you would like to look at the reference photo it is a screen capture from an Instagram reel and that is on my art community discord and the link is in the description for that as well as to the material list and my ebook so let's get started with that underpainting I have a large filbert brush that's nice and soft and ready for this. I'm going to start on the darkest values of our painting, which is going to be these trees here, big oak trees. I have detailed out my daisy flowers. but I've left everything pretty light and pretty vague, the rest of it. I'm gonna use brush strokes that reinforce what I'm painting. I'm gonna try not to get this color over our main blossoms. I'm using a decent amount of water here because the biggest difference that we're going to notice going to burnt sienna for our underpainting is that it's quite a bit more opaque. It is made out of dirt. So. that mineral content is going to make it just a lot more opaque. Now, instead of it lightening up to a gold tone like the quinacridone nickel ozo gold, it just lightens up to a lighter value of itself, which is just fine because a lot of times I feel like I'm just using yellow as my second color that I'm adding to a scene. sky is going to be darker in the corners by a little bit, but the sun is going to sit right at that third, just a little bit above the horizon. Now I'm going to get darker in the lower corners. I'm using brush strokes that are going to complement the grasses that I'm putting in there. Moving along the bottom of this painting. All right, I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to take some cadmium yellow white and I'm going to paint the lightest, brightest areas, and that's going to be where the sun is on the horizon. Now I'm going to do the areas of white left over on our daisies. And a real light touch along the field. So 
So this is our new underpainting process and I'm really happy with it. I think it yields results that are very similar to what we were getting before. Um, this isn't going to be glossy when it dries, which is actually a better feature. So, and I don't think they're going to be running out of dirt and sienna anytime soon. So these are all perks, 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 perks. It's also a non-toxic pigment and it dries very, very quickly with which lends itself well to our painting process, especially since right after we're done with the underpainting, we are mixing paint and then going straight into the background, which we're starting in the sky today. So I got my cerulean blue and my white, and I'm mixing a 50-50 ratio, which I know is going to be too strong, but that's the middle color. I'm going to scoot that over when it's mixed, and I'll make a lighter version of this. While I'm at it and looking at that reference photo, I'm going to go ahead and mix the field and the background mountain. I'm going to be adding some cerulean blue to the burnt sienna. Just a touch of white to lighten up the value and mute the color down. If I wanted to lighten up the color but keep it super saturated, I would use yellow and I'm going to do that to just a little bit of it because there is going to be a portion of that mountain that's directly below the sun and I'm going to need it to be real warm. A little bit of cadmium red making a muted orange. Okay, now we got the mountain below the sun color, and then extending out from that will be this more muted, darker tone. Now the oak trees are going to be probably the darkest value, as well as some underbrush down at the very bottom. I'm going to use cerulean blue, ultramarine, and then our burnt sienna. That's going to give us a dark, dark green. Earthy, earthy dark green. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that up here, mix a little bit more cerulean blue in, and that will be our distant trees. So we got our sky, distant trees, mountains, foreground darks. Over here is going to be our medium green. I start with medium green a lot. It's just cerulean blue and cadmium yellow light that gives us this color, not quite Kermit. That's what I'll call it. I'll call it not quite Kermit. I'm going to be adding yellow to the top of it and then a little bit of burnt sienna at the bottom of it and that's to mute it down get it earthy okay now i think we can start with these colors that we have i'm going to grab our filbert small filbert brush for the sky i have a lot of warm gradients there already so I'm just going to pull our darker sky blue from the corners and negative paint the cloud shapes. I'm 
going to try to stay loose and vague. Only putting about that much of our darkest, most saturated blue before I start blending to a lighter color. Taking that lighter blue and I'm blending back into the dark blue that's in the corners to make that a pretty smooth gradient. And then after that blend is done, then I'm just using the lighter blue to cut into the sky. Of course, along the horizon I'm not going to drag it past about there I'm dragging my brush very lightly almost parallel to the painting surface. Make sure to put just a couple little dabs over the cloud shapes and then we're good for now. I will be going back over this area with white and making a sunspot and adjusting some orange and detailing out some clouds, but not right now. We're gonna let all of that blue dry. And already it's looking very lovely with just a few steps. And I love painting that sunset gradient in first it just simplifies things so much okay so now we have that background mountain i added a touch more red to the mixture i had here and i'm just going to plan that the sun is going to be right above the spot that's what i have planned Going to paint up right to the horizon. And then I'm going to pick up my darker, more muted color. I'm going to blend back into that warm tone. Try to get something relatively smooth here. If you have some chunky brush strokes that you're not super in love with, you can go back and add another layer after this dries. It should be pretty quick. I'm making sure there's not a hard line where this mountain meets the grass. The last thing you want is a paint ridge right there, so you can just fix it by pulling the brush strokes down and leaving a tattered edge there. Painting around these penciled out tree shapes and getting that mountain top painted. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if this mountain is rather dark, and it is, and you're afraid you're not gonna have enough contrast between your tree color and the mountain, and I'm seeing that, I hear you, you can add just a touch of your light blue sky color. And we're gonna add a little bit of ground fog between the trees. Just gently touch that on there and blend it as you get closer to the top. Going back to that under the sun spot, I think that's pretty dry. Nope. Here's your reminder, if you didn't let your paint dry all the way and you went to put on more paint and instead it lifted it up, go do something different different spot go do a different spot and I think I will for that whole mountain because holy cow the sky's not quite dry yet so I'm not comfortable doing that I can put some foreground darks in though Going to pick up the quarter inch flat and that really dark color that has been mixed for foreground darks. I'm going to put in some stylish shapes angular, leaf like, and more of them are going to be towards the edges of our scene.
just adding a few more of those grass shapes, those seed heads. All right, now I'm gonna put that brush aside. We're just biding our time for the sky to be finished drying. Pick the fill dirt back up. Now I want a warm gray. So just a touch of burnt sienna there. Warm up that yellow. And then just a little bit of that dark value. Touch a yellow on the side there, and that's gonna be the cloud color that's right above the sunspot. Okay, I'm just making sure that the cloud right next to the sun is a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. Now I have some titanium white and cadmium yellow, and I'm going to make the brighter sides of the clouds on that sun side. okay if you stay vague and loose. All right, now I'm gonna rinse that out and pick up some bright white. On the back sides of the foreground cloud, you can add some white swishy shapes. And then if you're gonna go down here, you might wanna tint them a little bit yellow. Now I'm going to put a white spot right where the sun is. I realize that this brush is a tad on the big side, so I'm gonna switch over to my number two point and keep the middle of that spot thick and opaque, and then I'm gonna blend out the edges. This is just a dry brush.
touch of yellow and red right now. And I am going to go back to that horizon line right underneath the sun now that I know exactly where the sun is. And just put a brighter, this is a pretty transparent color, it's going to blend really well. Just a nice bright cast on the mountain directly in front of it. Now I know that we are going to come back to that mountain and increase the opacity and fix some of the blending issues. And so let's do that now. I believe we're kind of running out of that color. okay if you didn't blend the exact same color as long as you go over the entire shape again that's just fine Okay, now I'm going to add that fog in between those trees. And blend up. a little bit on that side just for continuity okay that looks so much better I am now happy with that that whole top third of the painting is pretty much done okay so little tiny oak trees you've noticed I'm sure that I have penciled out some tree holes in there and I planned it out because I want to make sure that I'm representing some sort of trunk per major mass. Um, I'm sure. Am I sure that you would notice? I'm not. I'm not sure if you would notice or not if you didn't do that. So that's up to you. If you want to just put random little bird holes in and see how it goes, that's up to you. I planned it out, I know that it would bug me. So I'm going to be painting around those little sky holes.
gonna try to loosen up the shape of the tops. Even though these are oak trees, I don't want them looking like giant broccoli. I'm not a big fan of broccoli trees, even if it's their natural form in real life and you're looking across the field and you're like, wow, those trees look like broccoli. I'm just not into it. Trying to keep the bottom as not a hard line, just representing a little bit of the grasses that are going to be in front of them, just with little sketchy shapes. Some of those shapes are getting pretty small. I'll just be re-adding them. Probably in a tiny brush when the time comes. Okay, loosening up the edges of those trees, just sending a couple branches out in front of that mountain. Okay, this next area is gonna be really warm. Really warm and light and vague and textured. Those are all the descriptors. I'm gonna use the quarter inch flat brush for this part. I'm gonna take some sienna and drag it up to that light peach color that you may or may not still have on your palette. Little bit of yellow up at the top with some titanium white getting a nice golden wheat color from that this is the gradient we're looking for Kind of reminds me of Honey Nut O's. Okay, so starting with the darker color that you've mixed. That has a, um, I don't know, whole wheat toast with honey type color to it. We're going to start with that and we're going to start very, very far away. And I'm going to drag up onto those dark shapes, just very gently. Very subtle movement. This is creating the distant, distant, fuzzy horizon line. Just gently tapping that and dragging it up onto those colors. We're gonna give us some dimension.
Okay, now the medium tone. You can do a little bit of that same gesture, but down. And this is still too far away for you to do a horizontal brush stroke or some sideways sketchy strokes. Now you should be seeing a little bit of change between your previous layer and this layer, and you're going to be overlapping them by quite a bit. And if you put down a brush stroke and it overlapped most of it, that's okay too, because it's going to just show some dimension in this field and how different types of grasses are not just lit differently, but they're in clumps. going to go heavy on the light color then do it right beneath your sun leading towards your daisies okay so you can pick up the yellow color and just put it dance it around here and there your dark again. Now this time pull up in slightly longer brush strokes and you're going to want to focus on the area that is more towards the edges of the painting. Now I'm going to make a darker and more muted version. You can do this by just dragging some of that dark, dark, dark green. Focusing on the grasses that are on the edge of the painting. back to the softer wheat color. I'll even pull a little bit more white into it. As you get closer and closer to the grasses and flowers that you've drawn out, you can get bigger and bigger brush strokes. we're at exactly halfway down the painting and you can start to use your flat brush on its sharp side to pull grass shapes up into that mid-ground. I'm going to mix a darker color for this using that dark value green and burnt sienna.
Okay, that's looking good. Now you can see that the colors are framing our, our flowers, and I'm just going to, with these grass shapes and grassy type brush strokes, I'm going to be darkening the edges, especially down in the corners. me mixing a lot of earthy warm grass tones remixing and remixing and remixing now it doesn't matter if you mix exactly the color that you had just had two things are happening we have so few pigments that it's hard to kind of completely screw it up and then because there's only so many ways to get to certain colors and then the second thing is if you mix a color and it's not quite an exact match, just incorporate it into that same element throughout your painting and you'll be just fine. You'll get so many beautiful subtle gradients by mixing and remixing your paints. And then you'll get really good at mixing them as well. So many perks. I'm adding water mostly for brush control. You feel like your bristles are getting a little too dry looking or not applying paint the way you need them to, then you might just need to add a touch of water. Since we're almost done with the background, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it up by putting in the negative shapes in those oak trees, which right now are just warm and golden, and something about that is lovely, but it's not quite right. We're going to need to put the color that's on the mountain, which was the light sky blue mixed in with that green. Hopefully you still have some from earlier. The blue-green with the cerulean blue. And with the liner, number one liner, I'm gonna try to put very thick paint on those, those spots. I feel like it just needs to be a touch warmer and a touch lighter.
Yeah, I'm adding just a few little smaller shapes at the edges of the tree, and I'm trying to group them up. And that seems about right. Now I want some grasses to lead you down from that sunspot here in this direction. So we're going to take some light yellow and all of this should be dry now. She should be able to lay grass on top pretty easily. Very gently. I'm adding some bright grasses in, in that spot, in that middle spot. got my flat brush angled up just a little bit so it's not a full rectangle that I'm putting down right now. If you're not comfortable doing this with this brush I would understand and then recommend to just gently put some tiny shapes down with either a point brush or a liner. It takes longer, but these are details that are in the center of our painting. And if you're going to go detailed anywhere, it's going to be in the center. Let me show you how that would look. Get that liner clean and dry. Really, really light color light nice light yellow this is an has a touch of orange in it which doesn't bother me at all and then you would sharpen your liner brush in your palette and take notice of which edge is the sharper edge and then just drag down gently I'm gonna do this in the area that I already put my other marks to just reinforce them and then I'm gonna make sure that there is some alternating. The cadence of the grass isn't just like, isn't consistent. You want to do clumps. Clumps and outliers. More clumps than outliers. Make sure that those grass shapes get bigger as you move, if you are moving further down. I grab some absolute white, which I'm not totally sure about. Might go back to the yellow. I didn't like the mark that I put down. I knew everything around it was completely dry, so I just like touched it with my finger to lift it off. But if you have your oopsie brush handy, that would be the better method of doing that. So a clean brush with your clean water that you hopefully have ready, and you can just erase. It's a very quick undo. Very, very quick. 
the closest thing we get to an undo. Okay, there. I think I'm pretty happy with that. That kind of drags us down. And put some texture and some interest in, in those, all those little vague grasses out there. That huge expanse of terrain, my god. Okay, so underneath all of that warm top grass is some underlying greenery. And I'm gonna put that in now. I'm gonna start with this warm green because that more closely mix, mixes with what we have already down. I'm gonna put a good amount of water in it too so that it's transparent. And that'll help it also mix in with the surrounding shapes and colors. I'm gonna try not to put this on any of the penciled out blossoms that I have down. I'm thinking leafy shapes when I'm putting this down. Okay, I picked up the next stronger green and I am just overlapping the places where I've already put the golden green. And moving my way down. Still thinking leafy shapes with this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna need to start thinking about edging out those daisies. And so, I'm gonna pick up my number two brush and at the tops of them, that warm color, with just a touch of green, I'm going to do my best to edge out that shape. And as I'm painting around it, just create sketchy leaf shapes so that it 
blends into the surrounding environment. Top edge is going to be a little bit harder than the rest of it. I'm not going to worry too much about overlapping the pencil line. That's fine. That's going to get covered up with the white. So I am going to leave some of the underpainting, but then some of the white. The opaque white is going to go on those guys. It's going to look so cute. Keep in mind what's going on around them. And I promise you it's going to be worth it. The painting around them is going to definitely look worth it. At the end, we're going to have some lit wheat and little grass shafts coming down into these shadowed areas, so don't fret. It will be coming. But that's something I like to do at the end. Those are, those are pretty important accents. I believe there were more grass shapes in this field, but I think as long as you get three different forms, you're doing pretty good.
Okay, one more big flower to paint around. And then we can do the next, next step. I've got to treat this part as a meditative practice. Okay, now that we're all the way around our primary flower shapes, I'm going to take a look at where everything is. I'm using a point brush right now so I can use that to make some more specific grass shapes. I noticed that our medium green is kind of like too, it's just too intense, so I'm going to mute it down with some sienna. going to be a similar value maybe just like a teeny weeny bit darker but I like that warmer green for this piece particularly so I'm just gonna add a few more specific leaves and I'm wedging my brush in the palette a little bit more water for brush control Okay, I feel pretty good about the texture there. I'm gonna make sure that the stems coming from the daisies are covered up with something a little bit lighter. looks all lovely I'm gonna do these little these little guys I don't know what they're called I don't know what they are little grass seed heads starting with some titanium white and I'm mixing it in the space that we have had a light yellow this whole time brush has a little bit of green on it and I'm not bothered by that too much I'm gonna drag some raw sienna up into that color now to warm it up 
little bit more titanium white because I want this to stand out from our other tones. These little seed pods also catch the sun so they can be a little bit lighter and a little bit more yellow and that's fine. Okay, now I'm mixing with my brush, which I typically don't like to do, but just try to get the paint away from the ferrule and back down on the tip and then sharpen up the brush in the paint. And here we go. I'm gonna use what I call sketchy shapes, sketchy brush strokes to get the shape of the head, the seed head that I want. I'm just gonna do the ones that are closer to the top because the ones that are a little bit in the grasses, I want them to be a little bit darker. We're gonna increase the value on them as they get down. Making sure that all of my pencil is covered up with this. a little bit of white to the top portion of these guys. The outside edge of them. Because I'm going down darker into the grass darkness. I'm going to increase the value of those heat pods. I'm just adding a little bit of that dark gray, green and mixing down into the darker tone that I have available to me. These guys are just going to be a little bit darker and a little bit more vague. Grabbing the script brush, that same color, make sure you have a good amount of control by putting a reasonable amount on your paint, amount of water in your paint. Because I'm going to be drawing little skinny grass marks. Coming away from those little tufts. Big and over. 
overlap just a little bit into your mid-ground grass. Don't go too crazy though. Okay, picking up a small round. I have a number one right here that'll do the job, and I'm gonna mix a very, very light orange, but using just the cadmiums, cadmium red and cadmium yellow. This is the center of our flower head. Just painting right over all of the pencil. Now for some titanium white, make sure that that brush is pretty darn clean and dry. Pick up some titanium white and sharpen your brush and your palette. Make sure you have a decent amount on there, but that it's not going to leave a blob. You can test this out somewhere else if you feel comfortable. Now start from the edge of the petal and go about 60% of the way down the petal. Starting at the edge, going towards the middle. Shout out to everybody that has to watch out for dog hair. Sharpening the brush again, maybe every four or five petals, depending on the petal. I'm going to go out to the flower on the left because I am putting my hand on the painting. It is dry, so that's okay. I painted that petal going the opposite way and I regret it almost instantly. Coming around to the last few there.
Okay. Now, I'm gonna need a gray, warm, light gray. Now, if you're okay with your daisies just like this, they're probably fine. But I'm gonna take a warm gray and go from the middle out towards the ends of the petals. I'm going to go a lot faster because this this part doesn't have as much impact. It's a little bit more subtle. Now that I have that on, I'm just going to brighten up a few petals. Ones that I feel like accent the bloom really well. Definitely not all of them. touch a yellow on the sun side of the middle of the blossom. Okay, now to put some bright grass, bright green. I've been waiting this whole time for bright green. Got my script brush out or your liner. Number one liner, you get that bright yellow green. And I'm gonna put some bright greens, but I'm gonna be really sparing with this. Sparing and also I'm going to be very intentional.
I'm using the liner just to touch up a couple petals. Okay, now let's do our final pass. We'll check out the sky. Do we like the sky? Background looks good. Midground looks good. It has enough interest, leads you to the focal point. Focal point is, I imagine, these guys, I think. That petal in particular stands out the most that has some dark values behind it. I'm really showing on the light that's coming through. I might hit this guy with a little bit more highlight, dragging you down to that daisy. Okay, I was just increasing the contrast of that one spot we decided is our primary focal point, and I think that works just great. I think we're going to call that good. Okay. Well, I can't wait for the peel. Um, and then we'll do more flowers in the next upcoming stream. So I can't wait for that. I hope you enjoyed this painting process video. And until next time, happy painting. <laughs>